Here I have one teaspoon of pepper powder, half a teaspoon of cumin powder, one teaspoon of coriander powder, and half a teaspoon of turmeric or haldi powder. One medium onion chopped fine, one small tomato chopped fine, half a cup of prawns, and four bindis or lady fingers, seven to eight cloves of lavang, and five cloves of garlic chopped fine, one tablespoon of vinegar, and one cup of thick coconut milk. Some salt to taste. So those are all the ingredients that we need. Now I'm going to add about one tablespoon of oil to a pan. So while the oil is getting nice and hot, I'm going to mix all of these powder masalas well together. And then I'm going to... Uh, add the vinegar to the powder masalas and mix everything to make a nice thick paste. Now we want the oil to be nice and hot so on a low to medium flame I'm going to heat the oil up and like I said I'm going to add this vinegar to the masalas and I'm going to mix them well till they become a nice paste. Now this is a very refreshing light curry and it goes best with some lovely rice. So that's done. And now that our oil is hot, I'm going to add the cloves or the lavangs. I'm going to fry them a bit so that they flavor the oil really well. And now I'm going to add the chopped up garlic. Now it's always very handy that you know if you chop up, I mean peel some garlic and keep it in a small airtight container in your refrigerator so that you don't need to uh, you know sit in last minute you know a clean up and peel up garlic. Now I'm going to add some chopped onion and saute it well. We're going to fry this onion till it becomes nice and translucent. So this curry, uh, you know, if you haven't tried out this Goan Kaldin curry, it's, you should because it's really, really delicious. Now I'm going to add this mix uh, paste, powder paste of pepper, coriander, uh, cumin and turmeric. Now I'll, I'll leave the video link of how I prepare my powder masalas at home. That is for coriander, pepper and cumin. How I prepare my powders, uh, masalas at home. I'll leave a link to my video. Now I'm going to add the coconut milk and we're going to mix all of this really really well. Well already my kitchen has such a beautiful you know the aroma of this kaldin is really really very very it's very mild but it's really very uh, nice. Now I'm just going to flavor it with some salt to taste. And this kaldin gets ready also pretty quickly as you will see. Now I am going to add some the prawns. Now the quantity that I am making is just enough for two people. So if you want to make it for four then just double the quantity. Then I am going to add the tomatoes. And we are going to mix everything nicely well together. Cook on a low to medium heat stirring in between. And now I'm going to add these lady fingers that I've just, you know, cut off the top, uh, the tips and uh, I'm adding it to the curry. And now we're just going to cover and cook this for about 7 to 8 minutes so that the prawns as well as the lady fingers or the bhindi gets cooked. So on a low to medium heat, on a very low heat actually, just cook it for about 7 minutes. Now you'll see that the curry has really thickened up or the kaldin has thickened up. So we're going to add about one fourth cup of water. We don't want it to be very watery like a stew, but we have to have a little bit of thickish consistency. So I'm just going with about one fourth cup of water. So add that and then mix everything or stir everything well. Now I also have another recipe for a fish kaldin. So I'll leave the link for that also below so you can go and check it out. And again, I'm going to cover and just cook this for about two minutes so that everything comes together. And then we're just going to turn off the heat and our kaldin is all ready. This is super, super delicious, guys. And the aroma also is so beautiful. So give this a try and let me know in the comment section as to how you like it.
Now I'm going to be using one cup of prawns, which I've cleaned, deveined, one medium onion chopped fine, about one inch of ginger chopped fine, about four cloves of garlic chopped fine, two green chilies cut into fours, one tomato cut fine, and a half a cup of uh, coriander. Also, I'm going to use some haldi powder, some chili powder, and some salt. Now, all the ingredients with their measurements will be in the description box below. So, I'm just going to marinate the prawns with some uh, turmeric or haldi powder, some red chili powder and some salt and I'm going to mix it really well and I'm going to set this aside for about 10 minutes so that the prawns get nicely flavored with the spices and the salt. So after 10 minutes our prawns are ready to be used. So now I'm going to heat one tablespoon of oil in a pan and once the oil is nice and hot I'm going to add these prawns to the oil and I'm going to fry them really well on a low to medium flame. So this should take you not more than a minute or two because prawns really get cooked really fast and uh, you know fry also very fast. So once they're ready just take them out in a bowl and set them aside. I'm not using the very large size prawns. These are the between small and medium size prawns. They are full of flavor and they, they just taste amazing. Now in the same pan, I'm going to add, uh, these are the prawns that I've set aside. So the oil is nice and hot. So to the same pan, I'm going to add my chopped up garlic. Then I'm going to add the chopped up ginger. Next I'm going to add the green chilies. Now I always like to use light green chilies. And I've cut them up into fours. Because they're less spicy yet they're full of flavor. Now I'm going to fry all of this well till the rawness of the ginger, the garlic goes away. So this should take you about half a minute. You know you'll get the lovely aroma of the uh, ginger and the garlic and the green chilies. Now once that is done, I'm going to add my chopped up onion. So I've taken a medium sized onion and uh, I'm going to add that and I'm going to fry the onion till it turns a little bit translucent. And once it does, I'm going to just cover and cook it for about a minute. Now saute everything well. Now I'm going to add my chopped up tomato. So I've just taken one medium sized tomato and cut it up and I'm going to add that. Then I'm going to add a little bit of the uh, coriander that we chopped because it really adds a lovely flavor to this bagar. Next, I'm going to add about one fourth teaspoon of haldi powder. Now, we already marinated the prawns with, uh, you know, one fourth teaspoon of haldi powder. And I'm going to add that and I'm going to also add a pinch of uh, red chilli powder. Because the haldi powder, when you add it to the bagar, it adds a lovely color. And the chilli powder also makes it a little bit spicy. Not over the top spicy. And again, we're going to cover and cook this for another minute because we want our tomatoes to be nice and cooked. And now everything looks great. So now we're just going to add our fried prawns. The aroma in my kitchen is just unbelievable and it makes me so hungry. I just can't wait for this to get ready. So now just add the prawns and just fry everything together so that everything you know gets well incorporated together. Well, I love to have this prawn chili fry just with some plain chapatis, goan chapatis. I have a recipe for that. I'll link it below. Or you can have this with some sorak rice with some lovely mango pickle at the side. So I'll link all those recipes down. So if you want to go and make sorak, you want to make a mango pickle, you, you can, uh, you know, do that. And now I'm just going to turn off the heat and I'm just going to add the remaining coriander. Now this coriander also adds a lovely, lovely flavor to this chili fry. And that's it guys, this chili fry is all ready and uh, it tastes just amazing. So if you haven't ever had goan chili fry, prawn chili fry, then you have to give this recipe a try. 
do let me know in the comments section below how you like this recipe i love hearing from all of you and i reply to let's start with today's beautiful recipe now first i've taken this aril which is also called jowli or long beans now i've taken some water to that i'm adding a little bit of salt and what i'm going to do is now take off the tips of uh, this eril sometimes they do have a string sometimes they don't so just take off the tips like this of all of the erils first like i said some of them do have a string sometimes they just come off like that now once that is done I'm going to break these with my uh, fingers. You can either do it this way or I'll show you the other way also. Just break them up into small little pieces like this, like you would do with gavar bhaji. You can take two at a time also. They are very easy to work with. So you can either do it this way or I'll show you how to do it with a knife also. So you can just take a bunch of them in your hand, just even them up so that they all have come together at the tip and then just take a knife and cut them. So whatever way you find easier for you, you can do it that way. This is also a very healthy vegetable which you can eat and I'm going to show you how to prepare it in a very easy way. So once we've cut all of this, we're going to soak again, put it in this water, salt water for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then I'm just going to rinse it out, you know, using a colander and washing it really, really well and letting all the water drain away like you'll see in the video so just collect all of them like this soak them and then i'm going to just drain them like this and then wash them under my running water really really well you have to ensure that you wash your vegetables really well and now we can start preparing our lovely vegetable so here I'm just going to heat my pan. Once my pan is nice and hot, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of oil. Now you can use coconut oil also. It gives a beautiful flavor to the dish, but I'm just using regular cooking oil. Now once my oil is hot, I'm going to add about half a teaspoon of mustard seeds. Once the mustard seeds begin to pop, what I've done is I've just crushed, coarsely crushed two cloves of garlic in my mortar and pestle. So you can add that. I'm going to put a sprig of curry leaves. Let's say about seven to eight curry leaves. Then I'm going to add half a teaspoon of cumin seeds or jeera. Next, I'm going to add half a teaspoon of asafoetida or hing. Now I'm going to add two green chilies that I've just slit. I'm going to saute everything really nicely so the chilies get nice and fried. And I'm going to add one medium sized onion chopped fine. Now we're going to bagar the onion really well till it turns nice and translucent. So this vegetable goes really well with, as a side uh, you know, dish to any uh, food like sorak, rice. Now I'm going to add the nicely washed up aril. And we're going to mix everything really well together. So this goes well with sorak, rice, some fried fish. It even goes well with the meat dishes also. And it helps us to get our veggies in, which is such a good, which is really good for health. 
and once I've sorted everything, I'm just going to cover and cook this for 7 minutes on a low flame, stirring in between. And you will see that it gets cooked really fast. Now I'm going to add 1 fourth teaspoon of turmeric powder or haldi. Mix everything really nicely well. Now I'm going to add some salt to taste and a pinch of sugar as well. Just a pinch of sugar. And again mix everything well together. Now our vegetable is a little bit done. It's not completely cooked. So to help the process, we're just going to add about 4 tablespoons of water or less than 1 fourth cup of water, just a little water to help the vegetable cook really well. Mix everything well together. And again, we're going to cover and cook this for another 2-3 to three minutes till our vegetable is nice and cook and the water evaporates. So you can see now that it's all ready. The vegetable is nice and cooked. You can even, you know, test whether it's cooked by just taking a piece and tasting it. And now I'm just going to add, I put the flame off and I'm just going to add some freshly grated coconut. This coconut also makes the dish so very tasty. And that's it friends. Our lovely Eril Fugat is all ready to enjoy. So I hope you... beautiful goan ch uh, chapatis. Now I've taken about a teaspoon of oil and I'm going to add about a cup uh, of uh, whole wheat flour. Now you can add salt or you you know I refrain from adding salt uh, and then I'm just going to add a little water at a time and I'm going to mix all of this very well together to form a regular you know chapati dough or pori dough. Now the dough has to be uh, kneaded really well. It has to be nice and smooth and soft, yet it has to be firm. It shouldn't be, uh, you know, uh, falling uh, like, a, like a pizza dough. It shouldn't be very, very soft. It should be just uh, like, you know, uh, a kind of a firm dough. That is, as you're kneading it, you should find the firmness. You shouldn't find a lot of moisture in it. And if you find that, just keep adding a little water at a time. So it should be firm, it should be smooth, and it should be, you know, like your hands shouldn't have any more of the uh, dough or the wheat flour on your hands. Your hands should be completely clean. So you keep on kneading this dough till, you know, you get that consistency. So uh, I leave the measurements of how much flour I used, how much of water I used in the description box below. So now let's start making this beautiful Goan chapatis, which are square, as you've seen in the pic. Now I've got my pan heating on a low to medium heat. I'm going to take a little bit of dry flour. I'm going to take a lime, a large lime size bowl of the flour. Now I've stored the remaining flour in my steel container in my refrigerator. So I've just taken a little bit of it just to show you all how to make this beautiful Goan chapatis. So you roll them nicely till they're nice and smooth. Just press it down like this. And then we're going to put a little bit more of flour and we're just going to roll this with our rolling pin just to form a small little round. Yeah, that's about it. Now we're going to drizzle a few drops of this clarified butter or ghee. And we're going to spread it around evenly so that it coats the entire circle. Now we're going to fold one half like this, the other half like this this way this way and then we're going to dust a little more flour on the top and then you're just going to roll i mean roll the pin in such a way that you keep getting the square so you only roll it on the edges don't roll it in the middle start rolling from the sides only 
and that way you know you keep doing this and you'll get this really you know this typical square kind of uh, you know shape it does come with practice but you know don't give up just try and try you will get it and even if it comes a little bit out of shape or if it comes a little bit round it's okay so i'm just going to show you again from a different angle so if you fold it in this way you will get the square shape just keep uh, rolling the pin over the edges and not from the center now sometimes if you find that your dough is really hard then you just have to add a little bit more of water and a little bit a few drops of oil and just keep kneading it if you find that your dough is very slimy and has a lot of water then keep adding flour now over here for about 1 cup of flour i used about 3/4 cup of water that also adding a little at a time till i found you know it was the right consistency and adding the oil after kneading and keeping it aside also helps in you know getting the dough to the right consistency it does come with practice friends and uh, i too uh, you know after practicing i can you know make the chapati dough to the right consistency and the right square and everything some of you all might be even uh, you know some of you might be experts in the in this field so now that your tawa or your pan is hot you'll now roast the chapati on one side you'll see the little bit of bubbles to uh, you know come up just turn it on the other side you'll see this white kind of color on the other side just turn it over again and then you'll see that it starts to fluff up a little at the edges turn it on the other side now it starts fluffing up nicely now ideally we use uh, like my grandmother or my dad used to use this round iron uh, you know tawas which uh, were pretty heavy and they were the traditional ones they had a little bit of kind of a uh, you know like a bowl a deep bowl kind of uh, shape and the chapatis used to come amazing in that and it was a retire up the uh, you know chapati you see the lovely layers also that it forms so my chapati is ready friends let's start with today's easy to make marble cake so let's go through the ingredients but well, here i have 125 grams of plain flour or maida 125 grams of powdered sugar this is about a quarter a cup of 4 tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder 1 teaspoon of baking powder These are three egg yolks and three egg whites. This is a quarter cup of four tablespoons of milk, one teaspoon of vanilla essence, one twenty-five grams of butter at room temperature. Now all the ingredients will be given in the description box below. So to a large bowl, I'm going to add the butter, which is at room temperature. I'm also going to add the powdered sugar, and I'm going to mix the two really, really well. till it becomes into a very light and pale kind of a uh, mixture so you can either use a whisk or a spatula like this and really mix it well you know for about 2 to 3 minutes at least mix it till you get this lovely pale yellow color now we're going to add the egg yolks and again mix it in well
Now we're going to add the egg whites and mix it again. Next we're going to add our vanilla essence and again mix everything really well. Next goes in the baking powder. And now we're going to add the plain flour and again mix everything till we get a very smooth batter. Now I'm going to uh, divide the batter into one third and uh, you know two thirds. So we're going to only keep one third with uh, we're going to add some cocoa. So I'm going to take the unsweetened cocoa powder and add the milk in to the cocoa powder. So we get this thick kind of a paste and we're going to add that to this batter. So we require only one third of the mixture to be a chocolate color or with you know the cocoa, cocoa flavoring and the rest is going to be plain. So mix this in well till you get this nice and dark rich cocoa uh, or chocolate color. So now I've preheated my oven to you know 200 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes and I've also lined my loaf tin with some baking paper or parchment paper. Now I'm going to use half of the mixture of the plain uh, batter and I'm going to uh, you know uh, then top it up with this entire chocolate or uh, cocoa mixture. Just even it out and then I'm going to put the remaining plain batter on top. So even that part out also. Don't forget to preheat your oven at, during this time for 10 minutes at 200 degrees Celsius. And then you're just going to take a sharp knife like this and just swirl it around in this manner. So this will give your cake the lovely marble effect. And now we're just going to bake this at 200 degrees Celsius for about 20 minutes. Let the cake completely cool before you demold it. And then just cut it up into these lovely slices and you will see the lovely marble effect of each slice. Now this cake is really very very moist and really really delicious. So do give this cake a try. And let me know your feedback as to how you like this cake. So this cake also has a very long shelf life. You can keep it at room temperature in a nice airtight container for about two to three days in a nice dark and cool place. Otherwise, you can refrigerate it and whenever you want to serve it, just keep it out for about 10 to 15 minutes.